Step five, small motion release. That's five arrows in a half hour that I've shattered on these fucking targets. This is my last one. I should just spare it and shoot it into the field so it never has to suffer. Hey everybody, it's Mark Bo with Voteland Outdoors and today it is the first nice spring day that we've had. It's uh, March 20th, 2021 and I'm going out to Silver Spring State Park to the archery range there to learn how to shoot my Asian bow with a thumb ring. And we're going to try applying the Boatland shooting method to a thumb ring launched arrow and see how that actually works. It should be really interesting. So let's jump in the Jeep and head out to Silver Spring State Park, just south of Plano, Illinois. Let's go. Well, crap, I don't even know where to begin. All I can tell you is today's lesson to this, this weekend's movie is gonna be slightly different than I planned because I've already shattered three arrows. <laughs> They're over here in the garbage, I gotta show you. I wish I'd been filming it, kind of. But if we look in the garbage can here, there's my three arrows already, not just shattered, not just shattered, but I mean stupefyingly shattered, like that. The ends busted. One of them hit. One of them hit metal so hard that all the fletchings literally flew off while I was watching it. <laughs> oh, so you're probably wondering, how did that happen, Mark? And why did you only bring six arrows 35 miles? You probably wanted to carry a few more. No, no, I probably didn't. But I was learning how to shoot a thumb ring with this this Asian bow that I got on Amazon from uh, a company called a company called AFX or AF Archery. It's a 40 pound bow at 28 inches, but I just got done checking it on my scale, and I actually pull it back easily to 45 pounds with my draw. So it doesn't stack up like a regular recurve. It actually stacks up very slow. That 40 pounds at 28 inches only translates into 45 pounds four more inches later. Four inches later, you only gain about five pounds, not 10. I was really surprised. Usually on a regular, let's call it a European recurve bow, it's gonna stack up 10 pounds easily and 40 pounds is gonna pull to 50, maybe 55. Not uncommon at all, but these limbs are so wiry and they are so smooth. This is such a smooth bow. You'll see that I actually ground a shelf onto it that I can hold it like this. And I have a little bit of a shelf and I find that the Voltland string walking method and the Voltland shooting method actually works really well. So you're actually gonna see me. Uh, oh, all right, oh God, I'm much all over the place today. I, uh, I'm shooting at these targets I gotta show you this, what happened. I'm shooting at these wool, these wood wool targets. And I, actually I was shooting over at this one. I was standing only about 15 meters away. I pulled back, I aimed for the center and I'm drawing with a thumb ring. And I literally shattered three arrows into the top bar here out of six. I mean, in the blink of an eye, I destroyed three of the six arrows I brought to do today's show. <sighs> so instead of showing you guys how a thumb ring works, actually I'm gonna set the cam I'm gonna set the camera up on a tripod really quick. So there's something I gotta show you. Man, I do not understand what the allure of thumb rings is because I think they're painful. I'll be right back. I had a thumb ring, pretty nice one, well sized for my hand, well shaped, kind of a nickel finish on it. And I had made an expander, which is very popular in Korea, that the idea is that you put it inside, it's a big hole here, you fit your thumb in when this is on the thinnest part, which means that this hole is as big as possible so your thumb goes in comfortably. Then you turn your thumb at a right angle, so this is what it looks like, but that means the hole's awful big and it can come out. You might lose this thumb ring on your release. 
So you use this thing to turn, turn, turn until it's snug in there. And this seems like a great idea. You're holding it the night before, you're watching TV, you're drawing back and you're thinking, yeah, yeah I could kind of see where this would work. It's kind of, kind of digging this. Draw back here, maybe draw back here. You see in some of the engravings and artwork, they're draping way back here. Seems like a good idea, but the truth is, guys, it puts such a load. There's such a load right on this particular part of your thumb. I don't know how you can rationalize that putting the load of a 40 pound bow, a 45 pound bow on one digit is somehow superior to spreading that load out across these three fingers. There's no way, there's no comparison to be made. None. The amount of buildup that you'd have to have in here, the damage that that thumb would undergo, the hypertrophy of material, sinew and tendon, and maybe muscle, even bone material, from repeated, repeated, repeated. You could talk all you want about how much stronger this part is. Who cares? That's not the part that's undergoing all of the force. It's right here in the fingers, and it's right here in the thumb. And if you look here, you look right here, there's no muscle there. There's none, it's just tendons that are gonna end up getting traumatized. So it's no different. You're not gonna tell me that this thumb, maybe 10% bigger than this one, is somehow superior to the three of these acting in unison. It just isn't. It's clumsy and it's painful. I would have to be shooting all summer long for there to be enough build up here, or I'd have to find a way to, to curve that surface in there so that it's a, a larger radius, not quite so sharp to take the edge off of all that pressure. And they're making even smaller thumb rings than this. So they're either shooting bows that are way under 40 pounds or 20 or something like this. Here's the idea. You can either hook over your finger, and this is kind of clever. The idea is that you hold like this and then you wrap your finger around, either the index finger, and then it's, the, it's your knuckle here that's holding the arrow on. The idea is that this thumb holds on so that when you're on a horseback, your thumb is holding it, it can't go anywhere. Dum -da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. Now you got two different cultures. One, cut, back, Let's put it on. One culture that says you're going to wrap your, this finger around like this, which means it's the side of your finger that's actually holding the arrow, helping to hold the arrow like this. See my hand? It's holding the arrow against the side of the bow. That's kind of cool. The other one that I've seen, and you see Sumerian artwork going back to what, 3000 BC, where it actually, this is the finger that's doing the wrapping. So you have this one whole finger that's actually helping to hold the arrow on. And that's this is what I was trying to do. This just feels more comfortable to me. But you're still putting just a ton of pressure right on this particular section of a thumb that doesn't have any muscle to support it. So when you're drawing back, you're drawing back like this. And the idea is that you can actually aim like this. Well, the first thing you notice is this, I'll draw back. Can I see the, can you see the arrow tip? Cause I sure as hell can't see the arrow tip. I can't see it. Well, how the hell am I supposed to aim something I can't see? I might as well close my eyes for that matter. It doesn't work. Also, in order to see, I found myself anchoring. I found myself anchoring. I found myself anchoring under my chin a little bit, trying to look down, that kind of thing. Didn't work. I shot high, and because I shot high, I shattered three arrows into the into the metal on these target holders, or on these targets. So. We're gonna switch and we're gonna ditch this because the truth is I'm not keen on finger rings, thumb rings, sorry. I'm not keen on them. I'm keen on fingers, three fingers drawing back, but I love this bow. I love the power of these bows. They're, they're designed, if they had a shelf cut in, if they actually had a shelf to make the, the position of the arrow on the, in the geometry of the air of the bow of the riser very very consistent they're, they're brilliant the laminate that's going on inside here and the fact that they curve makes them so smooth makes them so fast that you're crazy to not try to figure out 
how to use the bolt line shooting method to shoot these. So I'm going to set the camera up over there at the 20 meter mark and we're going to take my last three arrows and we're going to apply the bolt line shooting technique with our fingers to an Asian bow to see how accurate it can be and you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised. So I'll be right back. Bolt land shooting method, Asian bow from AF Archery. I think it cost me about 260 bucks. And it's actually a two piece takedown right here. It comes apart. I mean, I love this bow. I want badly to try to put a shelf on it that goes right through the center so I don't have any parallax, so I don't have to do any kind of canting like I do with my English longbow. But the way it shoots, how smooth it is. God, do these guys know how to make bows. We're going to try the bolt land shooting method. If you guys remember from the previous videos, the bolt land shooting method is a five step method for shooting with deadly accuracy right from the very beginning, from the moment you pick up a bow with any bow you put in your hand. Step one, you're choosing the gap. You're choosing the distance between the knocking point of the arrow and where the drawing finger is, the drawing point is that goes underneath your chin. That difference, that gap, is going to determine the elevation of the arrow is going to determine the distance that the arrow flies. So you have very precise control over distance by using that string walking. Step two, you're going to draw back under your chin. Step three, uptake. Let's just keep shooting. It's a fun Saturday. Step two. You're going to draw back under your chin so that you can step three look down the left edge of the string the left edge of the string becomes your rear peep sight you're looking right over the top of the arrow step four you're going to put the tip of the arrow right smack on your target like this like that not above it not below it not to the right of it not to the left of it you're putting it right smack on that's what my sight picture looks like right there and step five, you're going to make a small motion release, small motion, as small as humanly possible. Let's shoot at that 20 meter target. For me, for a 45 pound bow, that gap should be about three and a half fingers from the knocking point of the arrow, three and a half fingers to the drawing point of my finger. Step two, draw back under my chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right on that bottom white dot. No, right in the center of the target. Step five, slow motion release. Damn, that method works well on an Asian bow. The Voland shooting method doesn't care what kind of bow it is. It just cares what the draw weight is. That's all it cares about. That's it. And then you end up with a beautiful shooting bow. Let's try this again. Step one, choose your gap. You go with uh, three fingers. Step two, draw back under your chin. Three, look down the left edge of the string. Four, tip of the arrow on the target. Five, small motion release. God, that arrow shot smooth. Man, that arrow shot nice. Let's do this one more time. And I've only got a partial shelf. I have, I'm not really in dead center of my bow. This is what dead center of my bow looks like. Looks like this. This is where the arrow is, cocked off to the side ever so slightly. And it doesn't seem to matter. And the only adjustment I need to make is that I'm not pushing the web of my hand against the arm, against the handle here. Instead, it's, it's this part right here that's applying firm, even pressure on the bow handle, like that. Not like this. That's not how you shoot these kind of bows. It's more like a long bow where it's the heel of your hand is pushing in like that. Let's shoot one more. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, go back under your chin. This is gonna be one of those. This is gonna be one of those fun weekends, I guess. Step one, choose your gap. Three fingers. Step two, draw back under your chin. Step three, look on the left edge of the string. Step four, tip the arrow on the target. Step five, slow motion release. Small motion, nothing here moved. Just the fingers went like that. That's it, let's go take a look at the target. This is pretty cool, guys. Still running? Yeah, still running. 
I kind of like that Asian gold. You guys ever get a chance? These guys didn't pay me. In fact, they won't even answer my emails because I'm asking them to make a modification to a one bow and I'll buy it. They're not interested. But there's my first time shooting this thing with my fingers. I aimed for the white dot the first time and then I decided to aim for the center on the second two. That's at 20 meters. Okay, we're part way there, but you guys remember, you guys remember that the Voltland shooting method is all about, the Voltland shooting method is all about shooting at different distances by being able to use Voltland string walking to actually adjust that gap for different distances. And that Voltland string walking requires that you know two numbers about your bow and about your arrows. One, excuse me, what's your 20 meter gap? You start at the 20 meter gap, and two, what's your 10 meter interval gap? For me, it turns out that on this slightly lighter bow, my 20 meter gap was three fingers exactly, but I'm willing to bet that my 10 meter interval gap is still a half a finger. So if I wanna shoot at the next target over there, which is about 40 meters, then I'm gonna need 10 more meters, which means it's gonna be a gap of three fingers minus one going to be two and a half finger gap that I use. So let me pause the camera, pull the arrows, and we're going to go and shoot at 40 yards. Coming up. 40 meters. Okay. You can see on the sign we're set up at 30 yards now. It's yardage here because this is a hunter's archery range. So 30 yards ends up being 30 minus half a tenth of that. 30 minus 3, 27 meters. It's going to be a little bit of approximating today, but 27 meters is 10 more than the 18 meters that was over there. So it's a 10 meter change. It's a half a finger change in my gap. Boltland shooting method. Step one, choose your gap. Start, Boltland string walking. Start with your 20 meter gap. I need to go to 30. That means the back of the arrow needs to come down. That means the gap needs to get narrower. This gap needs to get smaller to bring the back of the arrow up to bring the front of the arrow, to bring the back of the arrow down, to bring the front of the arrow up to give me increased range. So, start at 20 meters. Start at my 20 meter gap. And now I'm gonna shorten it by only a half a finger. Now I have a two and a half finger gap here, set up for 30 meters. Step two. Draw back under your chin. Three, look down the left edge of the string. Four, tip of the arrow on the target. Five, slow motion release. I can't talk and shoot. One more time. Just five, slow motion release. Shoot it left. Slow motion release. And I just shattered another arrow. Good God. Four arrows in less than 30 minutes. Even when they're only $6 a piece, guys. $5 is $6 a piece. It still hurts. I'm on 24 bucks. I was going to shoot two lessons today, but. One of the requirements of shooting lessons is you actually have to have arrows. And if I keep shattering these fucking iron rails that they put on these bales, why people make archery targets with metal around them? I have no idea. Why do they do that? Ugh. Clearly they're in cahoots with the people that make arrows so that this is a way of increasing the consumption of our arrows because you come in and you shatter them all. Cut. Take five. Step five, slow motion release. That's five arrows in a half hour that I've shattered on these fucking targets. This is my last one. I should just spare it and shoot it into the field so it never has to suffer. One, choose your gap. Start with a 20 meter gap. We 
fingers is three fingers. Go up a half a finger. We got two and a half fingers. Step two, draw back under your chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the string. Four, tip the arrow on the target. Five, small motion release. We put it in the upper left hand corner. That's not bad. Let's go try this method out at the next distance, which is 40 meters. Be right back. Okay, here we are, left. Guys, I'm down to one arrow. <laughs> it's all I got left. We're gonna shoot at 40 meters. This is a makeshift 40 meters. There's 35 yards, here's 40 yards. So it's really 40 minus 40 minus four, it's 36 meters. It's a 36 meter shot there, just to show that the Voltland shooting method and Voltland, just to show that the Voltland shooting method and Voltland string walking can work with an Asian bow. Here we go, step one, choose your gap. Step, uh, and choosing your gap means you start with your 20 meter gap, three fingers. I go up a half a finger to 30 meters. I go half a finger up again for 40 meters. That's it, that's my 40 meter gap, super simple. Step two, draw back under your chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the string. Four, put the tip of the arrow right smack on that green. Five, small motion release hit the upper left hand corner. Let's go shoot that again. All right, here we are shooting at 40 meters with the Voltland shooting method. One more time. All right, here we are shooting at 40 meters. It's a makeshift 40 meters. That's 35 yards right there. I've backed up another seven. So this is really an authentic, I think it's as close to a 40 meter authentic 40 meter shot as I can make, about 39 meters. Step one, choose your gap of the Voltland shooting method. Step one, choose your gap. I start off with a 20 meter gap, go up a half a finger for 30, another half a finger for 40, and there's my gap for 40 meters. Step two, draw back under your chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the string. Step four, the tip of the arrow right smack on the target. Step five, small motion release. Holy buckets! Did you see that shot? We gotta go take a look at this, you guys. Take the bowl with. This is what I love about this shooting method, why I get so excited about trying to teach it to people. Because it doesn't matter where on the planet Earth you like archery, it doesn't matter what your equipment is, even something that doesn't really have a shelf. It doesn't matter, you can't the bowl a little bit, you compensate for the lack of shelf. And look at what I just did, first shot at 40 meters. First shot at 40 meters with the Voltland shooting method. First shot in a crosswind. That's gotta excite you. So what did we learn today, people? Let's put this back up. Uh, hold on a second. What we learned today, we learned that the Voltland shooting method, five step super easy method for shooting any kind of a bow with nothing but your fingers and your, your arrow, this one works on English long bows, works on recurve bows, works on Olympic recurve bows, looks like anything, any kind of recurve curve, any kind of a recurve bow with a shelf. But now we found out today that if you happen to have an Asian bow, you can actually cant it a little bit to compensate for the lack of a real shell. And the Voltland shooting method actually works on these too. And these are such wonderful bows. It's so exciting to know that something that's got such a smooth power draw, that it increases without snacking like this. And it's so quiet that a bow that looks this good and behaves this well actually can be shot well, even by an inexperienced archer using the Voltland shooting method and Voltland string walking. That's it for today. I'm down to one arrow, so I can't do my next video. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be, in the next video, we're gonna go and revisit string walking from step, from square zero. Brand new review of string walking, and we're gonna come and shoot at everything from five meters out to 50 meters. This is Mark Vogel with Volden Outdoors. Please subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you out there. Bye. Cut. Guys, you're not gonna believe it. 
I was just getting ready to leave. I wasn't going to shoot at 50 meters. But then lo and behold, somebody was actually digging and found one of my old arrows from who knows how long ago. I've now got two arrows, and that's a true 50 meter target. It's 50 yards, which is 45 meters, plus I added another five meters on, so I'm at 50 meters. So we're gonna use a volt lens shooting method. We're gonna use a volt lens shooting method to shoot 50 meters with an Asian bow and with my regular fingers. Step one, same as before. Choose your gap. Start with your 20 meter gap. I go up a half a finger to, from 20 to 30, 30 to 40, another half a finger, another half a finger, and now I have a 50 meter gap. Step two, draw back onto your chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, put the tip of the arrow right smack on the center of that bag. Step five, slow motion release. Bottom left corner. It's a little hard to aim without a shelf. I'm gonna try it one more time. At least I didn't shatter the arrow. Step one, I know it's a one and a half finger gap down now. I don't have to recalculate that. So step one, choose your gap. Step two, go back under your chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string. Step four, tip of the arrow on the target. Step five, small motion release. Missed. Let me go get it. Hey, here we are. Attempt number two at 50 meters, Boltland shooting method, Boltland string walking, Asian bow. I had one out of two on target the last time and it wasn't that close. It was in the bottom left hand corner of the straw. It is challenging to not have a fixed shelf because my hand might even be an eighth of an inch high. It might be an eighth of an inch low, but you see the angle change in the arrow? Even, even in how I squeeze, if I squeeze my hand extra hard, I can make the arrow rise. That's the challenge of not having an arrow rest. So, but it can be done. Let's watch. Uh, attempt number two. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back under your chin. Step three, look down the left edge of the string. So you're looking right over the top of the arrow. Step four, with the tip of the arrow right smack on the center of the target. Trust the method. Step five, slow motion release. Shot left. Trust the method, Mark. Trust the method. I tried to compensate. Shame on me. Here we go. Step one. Choose your gap. Step two. Draw back under your chin. Step three. With the tip of the ear, look down the left side of the string. Step four. Tip of the arrow right smack on the target. Step five. Small motion release. Yeah! Bottom center. About six inches up from the bottom. We're going to do this one more time. I, I don't think I still have my string walking gap worked out. I think it's actually a little bit, it's a, it's, a, it's a weaker bow. It can't be the same gaps that I've been using for my 55 pound bows. The ones that I'm shooting, I'm pulling nearly 60 pounds. I can't be pulling 45 pounds and think that those numbers stay the same. Probably my interval gap is not a half an inch, but it's three quarters of an inch, that kind of thing. All right, pausing and shooting and going and getting my arrows. Be right back. Okay, attempt number three. Make attempt number three of shooting uh, uh, what's a 45 pound Asian bow at a 50 meter target. We're gonna make two little adjustments to my two numbers of Voltland string walking. We're gonna, actually we're gonna keep the 20 meter gap at three fingers, but we're gonna use three quarters of a finger to determine, God, it's not even quite that, it's just a little more than half. Is, is the 10 meter interval gap. So that means if 50 meters was really three meters, three fingers down, a half a finger up, a half a finger up, a half a finger up to go from 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, I'm gonna go up another quarter of a finger. That's gonna be my slight adjustment at 50. Possibly due to the wind, I've got a, about a five mile an hour, six mile an hour wind coming in right at the camera from where I'm at, from camera left is where it's coming in. There's my gap though. Step two, draw back onto your chin. Step three, look down the left side of the string, look over the top of the arrow. Step four, tip the arrow right smack on the center, trust the method. Step five, small motion release. I hit the branches in that tree. 
damn it. Here we go again. Step one, choose your gap. Step two, draw back onto your chin. Step three, tip, look down the left side of the string. Four, tip of the arrow on the target. Five, full motion release. Oh, right dead center. When you do it right, it works so well. Let's go take a look at that. Now my first shot was a complete miss, so I'm not lying to you. You know my videos don't do that. All those other guys that do all the cutting and stuff on their videos, so it looks like every shot's perfect. No outtakes and nothing like that. What have you ever been able to do that? I haven't. You're gonna miss. You got the shakes, things like that. But then, once in a while, you do it right. So I want most of my videos to show you all the right, 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 the correct, correct, correct stuff. But I don't mind showing you the misses either, because that's what makes looking at when I do it right so glorious. When you look and say, what's possible? There's a 50 meter shot with an Asian bow using the Voland shooting method. Holy crap! I mean, does it get any better than that? And there's my miss. Just got pushed off to the side a little bit. I'm learning how to hold. There's a big difference between holding an Asian bow like this and holding your recurve bow. So if you're used to using your recurve bow and pushing like this, accidentally sometimes when you're holding your Asian bow, you are gonna go like this and then you're gonna get unpredictable results. Look at that, jeepers. All right, there's, there's another outtake. I won't bother signing off or anything. I just thought you guys would enjoy seeing that ad at 50 meters, but if I can do that at 50 meters and still be underneath the arrow with my gap, then that means 60 meters is fair game, 70, 80, 90 meters. I think I've got another video where I shot this bow last summer at 90 meters out at Blackwell. So I already know that's possible. In fact, it shoots like a dream at 90 meters. It's always uh, the flaws in not having a rest. Those become wildly apparent only when you're at very close distances and you have to do that canting to try to compensate. That's it, have a great day, guys. Bye, cut. All right, guys, here's the last outtake of the day. I just wanna show you this, this uh, AF, AF archery bow. Specifically, I wanna show you that it's a two-piece takedown right here, and it's very well engineered. The tolerances inside here are remarkable. You're gonna hear a pop like that when I pull the pieces apart. That's how tight it is. So let me take the string off. Make sure that you're balancing the pull, that you feel a balance right here as you take the string off. That was super simple when it's only 45 pounds. 40 pounds. So the string is off. But now, check this out. Watch how easy this comes apart. Look at that. Do you see that? Did you hear that? That's how tight the tolerances are. There's even a guide pin so that there's no accidentally rotating it like this. There's no misaligning it. It absolutely goes right in. Like that. So can you guys guess what the modification is that I wanted them to do? I'm trying to find somebody that can actually make an insert that goes right here. It fills in this gap. So it's as if there's an extension of this, an extension of this right there, but what you're actually gonna find in the middle is a shelf. So it's gonna be putting in a handle. Imagine that there was a gap in between here and that what this actually is in here is a shelf, an actual cutaway shelf that you could shoot through. That would be remarkable because then I'm not asking the guys at, at, at AF Archery, AF Archery, I'm not asking them to change this part of the bow. They just keep making it, and all I do is add one little insert in the middle that gives me the shelf that I'm looking for. Imagine if you had the power and the smoothness of Asian limbs, but you had the accuracy of a shelf. Hi! God, that's exciting. So I'm, I'm hoping I can make that in the summer. If I may end up making it, that'd be fine. I'll end up going and selling it on eBay and everybody can go and add that little piece in. They're gonna have to get a slightly longer string. Okay, big deal. That's possible, but that's all they need. All right, that's it, done with the outtakes. I got stuff to do, bye. Freckles, jump up. Hi, baby.
Who's a baby? Look up here. <laughs>